to boldly go where no man has gone before. Hey everybody, welcome back to Star Trek episode 24 this time. The last time we had an Armageddon of sorts. We visited this war-torn planet of beautiful buildings, beautiful crystal blue skies, lakes as far as the eye can see, men with hats on their heads, hats so high they can touch the beautiful crystal blue sky. And uh, they were deeply in the deep war, 500 years war, ravaging their population 3 million per year. And uh, Kirk went down, he was going to bust it all up. He started destroying property. <laughs> he started busting stuff up. You know, he couldn't stop him. He wasn't having any of their shit. And in the end, well, who knows what happened to them in the end, I guess. They also had that ambassador guy who started off being a jerk, but he actually ended up being a decent guy once he saw the truth. The problem with these these super high commissioner galactic ambassador guys, they need to be they need to have their eyes opened before they'll snap out of it. That's that's my feeling on it. Um so yeah, an interesting episode. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I like the hats, I like the 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 way they got around destroying their buildings and you know the way they kind of the bizarre way they resolved their war differences they're like let's just do it electronically we'll just send people into this disintegration chambers you know we can make it all clean like i still don't know how that woman got got hit though by that fusion bomb when she was standing in the same room as everybody else do you i don't know maybe a sniper got her Sniper from the other planet. They they coded in a sni sniper into the simulation. I don't know. This one is called This Side of Paradise. I'm expecting an Eden of sorts. Like Shore Leave. That's, that's what I'm expecting. But uh, it's an interesting title. Because it's it's called This Side of Paradise. It's, it's an interesting way to phrase it, you know? Anyway, let's get into it and see... Oh, well, the next episode's called The Devil in the Dark. Interesting having those two episodes side by side, isn't it? This side of paradise, The Devil in the Dark. Of course, on the other side of it, there's a taste of Armageddon. So we've got Armageddon, Paradise, and The Devil. <laughs> so, yeah, let's get into it. Looking forward to it. Ah, a planet. Oh. Shields up music already. What is this planet? Approaching Omicron Seti 3, sir. Omicron Seti 3. There were 150 men, women, and children. What are the chances of survival? No colony? Absolutely none, Captain. Bertold rays is such a recent discovery. Living animal tissue disintegrates under exposure. Sandoval's group could not have survived after three years. And what about us? Can we afford to send people down to the planet's surface? Yeah, how long do the we... breakdown of tissue does not develop immediately. Okay. We can risk a limited exposure. And I've pinpointed a settlement. Is this whole planet being bombarded with some sort of radiation? With Dr. McCoy and a biologist. Okay. Ah, it's like shore leave. Let's see if we recognize anybody. No red shirts. Who's the biologist? Yeah, Sulu's down here too. Okay, nobody around? Hey, they had time to build all these buildings before the radiation got him. Another dream that failed. Hardly that, sir. Oh, there they are. They're thriving. Welcome to Omicron Sadie 3. How do you survive the... I'm Elias Sandoval. He's the guy. The main guy. Okay. So we came to this planet. We sent a colony here. Took a year to get here. But it wasn't... They didn't know at the time that this crazy ray blast was hitting the planet. Nothing could survive. But apparently these people have 
they're just fine. So something, they have a natural immunity. Something on the planet is helping them sur to survive. They're aliens that just look human. But this is what I like, a mystery. Kirk doesn't like them, but I do. It's paradise. It's paradise. Hopefully there's no snakes. We've been expecting someone for some time. Yeah. Our subspace radio didn't work properly. How have you survived? You're here. We're happy to see you. Don't touch me. Come, let me show you our settlement. Just an educated guess. I'd say that man is alive. He, yeah. lo he looks alive. These people shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Is it possible that they're not? What do you mean, Sulu? You shook hands with him, Jim. He's alive, there's no doubt about it. Does he look like a ghost, Sulu? That Berthold rays are incontrovertibly deadly. Gentlemen. We got a mystery. We're debating in a vacuum. Let's go get some answers. <laughs> debating in a vacuum. I love, I love that. Yeah, let's let's talk to them. Let's literally ask them. Do they know about the Berthold rays? Have they built their houses out of anti... Do they have shielding? Have they mutated? You see, Omicron is an ideal agricultural planet since it went before Oh, hello. Elias. <laughs> oh, Spark. Layla, come meet our guests. Layla and Spark? Mr. Spark and I have met before. Oh, they know each other. It's been a long time. Were they involved? I think so. I think you'll find our settlement an interesting one. Our philosophy is a simple one, that men should return to a less complicated life. Right. We have harmony here. Complete peace. It's paradise, Kirk. We'll try not to interfere with you. Don't mess it up. Make yourselves at home, gentlemen. Kirk loves wrecking shit. When he gets to a planet, doesn't he? Blowing up their computers? They don't have any. They don't have any. Ah, cool, cool looking well. What uh, exactly are we looking for anyway, sir? Anything odd. Whatever doesn't look right. Whatever that is. These things. I wouldn't know what looked right or wrong if it were two feet from me. <laughs> Sulu, those flowers, those weird flowers. Hey. Oh, it's the, it's the, we saw at the end of, in the credits of one of the previous episodes, we saw spores. I presume this is, this is the spores episode from these, these flowers. It's an interesting choice, actually, for Star Trek, that in the, the final part of their, in the credit sequence of the episodes, they often show clips of other episodes that haven't happened yet like little tiny picture te teasers of the future it's I, I've never seen it in any other show and I don't know if it's just because I presume they were always in the episodes and it isn't just a out of order production thing because we saw the spores somebody's getting Sulu's gonna get hit by these spores Ah, Sulu. <laughs> it's just gonna it's gonna be like um Return of the Archons. He's gonna get hit by them and he's gonna be Ah, peace. It's paradise here. I'm one uh, what was it? I'm of the body. Are you of the body, biologist guy? <clears throat> What's this guy seeing in in this barn? <clears throat> Apologies if my if my my voice is a bit crackly today. I don't know what it is. It just got up uh, the wrong side of the bed, I think. <laughs> That's a funny line, though. Still, we're talking about things that are two feet from him. <laughs> That's very funny. What is? It? Oh, he escaped. No cows. We haven't seen any animals. No horses, no pigs. Did we bring them? Not even a dog. You've known the Volcanian. Six years ago. Did you love him? If I did, it was important only to myself. Mr. Spock's feelings were never expressed to me. It is said he has none to give. That's not true. That's not true. Would you like him to stay with us now? To be as one of us? Oh, one of us. There is no choice, Elias. Off the body. He will stay. Okay. Get off the planet immediately. It looks like you've got a heart, dude. Everything check out, Doc? I've examined nine men so far, and they're all in perfect condition. Textbook responses. There seems to be a total absence of life on the planet, with the exception of the colonists themselves and, and the various types of flora. Yeah. Very well, continue investigations. Kirk out. 
No animals. The records of this expedition indicate that they did have some. They brought them. Breeding and food purposes. Okay. I've been looking for you. You haven't seen our fields and crops, Captain. This soil will grow anything we plant in it. Ooh, anything. It's perfect. It gives us all we need. It is perfect. What about your animals? Biology report ready, sir. He's the biologist. For an agricultural colony, they actually have very little acreage planted. There's enough to sustain the colony, but very little more. Hmm. It's like a jigsaw puzzle, all one color. No key to where the pieces fit in. It's a puzzler. Kirk here. I think you'd better get back here. Trouble? No, but I'd like you to see this for yourself. No. Are you sure there's not trouble? The music says there's trouble. No major operations, but there was an appendectomy. What's so strange about that? He's got his appendix not, back. But I examined that man not more than two hours ago, and you know what his readings were? Mm. It did record a healthy appendix where one was supposedly removed. He's got one back. She's kind of creeping me out now. Nothing. Yet your plants grow, and you've survived the exposure to bear toll rays. That can be explained. Could you explain it to me now? Please do. Later. Way later. Never understood the female capacity to avoid a direct answer to <laughs> any question. If I tell you how we survive, will you try to understand how we feel about our life here? Sure. Come. Where's she bringing them? Those danged flowers? She's gonna spore them. Shields up, Spock. She's a femme fatale. I've received orders from Starfleet Command to evacuate all personnel from this colony. No. They're happy here. They're healthy. Why evacuate? I have my orders. It's entirely unnecessary. We're in no danger here. We've explained the Bertol rays to you and their effect. Can't you understand? Hey, hey, can't you understand, Doc? They're perfectly fine. There's something going on here. They should have been dead years ago. They're not. They're showing no signs of birth old radiation. So, what makes you think it's going to affect them now? You know? There's either something we don't understand about, the birth old stuff, or they're immune in some way, or they've been infected by spores that make them immune. But it has, has it, does it have any other effect on them? I presume the, look, the animals died because, because they didn't get spores. Like they, they, they got birth holded, you know? Everything, every animal, every insect just got, nothing could survive except plants. Uh, so that's why they, they're not here, but the humans are just fine. They're not acting weird. Do you know the way when we went to the um, what are little girls made of planet? The the guy was acting robotic. The first guy that met him. But these people are acting just normally. Except for the <laughs> I guess the woman interacting with Spock. She's a bit evasive and coy and mysterious. But that could just be the way she's always been. Spock certainly doesn't see her as acting any differently than how he remembers. So yeah. Anyway, I thought for sure Sulu was gonna be the first to get infected with whatever it is. They've said that we can't leave. They're not gonna be able to leave. Why? Maybe they can't survive outside of this planet now. You know, because of whatever happened. Maybe they're bound here. But look, hey, look. If everything is just normal, everything is just, if they're not evil or anything, just leave them be. They're having a nice, they're happy here. No need to evacuate them. The, the orders for evacuation were purely because of the... Because we discovered that the birth hole stuff. Although... Although, didn't we just, didn't Starfleet assume everybody was long dead? Why even waste a starship coming out here? Just in case? I don't know. Anyway, Doc. Doc, they're fine. That, that one guy grew back his appendix. How can I make you understand? Your own instruments have shown that we're all in perfect health. What about your animals? We're vegetarians. We're vegetarians. That doesn't answer my question, sir. 
You stress very unimportant matters. Uh, he's evasive. You will not leave. It's not much further. You can see the stalk of it. It gives life, yeah. peace, love. You gotta stare into it. The spores. 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 Oh, they got him. How do you feel, Spark? Oh, let's get into him. It shouldn't hurt. No, I can't. He's resisting it. Spark. Now, now you belong to all of us. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this is a really That's a really nice shot. Okay, natural break. That's the first time we've seen Spark let his emotions show. It seemed like the spore is just kind of because we know he's ha half human, but he suppresses he doesn't suppress the human side. As far as I understand it. He just suppresses the no, the, you know what? No, because don't Vulcans have, or Vulcanians, let's use the terminology of the time. Um, they have emotions that they just control. They've got fierce emotions that they control. So the fact that he's half human, you know, it, it makes re no real difference. You know, he still controls that. Although, Yeah, I don't know. I don't want. To, I don't want to think too much about it right now. Um, but yeah, that's why it was. That's why it had such a, a visceral, almost painful effect when he got blasted. Because, the half that was trying to control the, the emotions couldn't. Couldn't quite get a handle on it, or got, dissolved. By the spores, the control part got dissolved. And all that was left was the, the this feeling, but I don't know. They don't seem. They described it as like a happiness pill, but they don't seem that happy. Sulu in the Return of the Archons episode, when he got staffed, he seemed blissfully happy, as did McCoy, when he got turned. But all these all of these people have their personalities intact. They're not mindlessly in lockstep. Maybe they, they feel a oneness with each other. Maybe that's it. They're all part of the, you know, it's very kind of wholesome and kind of a communal thing. Uh, like a more wholesome version of the body from the Archon episode. Where everybody's just together in peace and love and harmony. You know, like hippies, freaking hippies. But it's fascinating to see, hey, that Spock is the first to get hit, and that it has such a, a big impact on him. Now, who do I suspect will be able to resist this? As we've seen in the episodes leading up to this, the last person to fall is always Kirk. So I suspect that he will be the last person to fall in this case, too. Stay away from the flowers. Sulu, I presume they just got Sulu off camera. And the doc, the doc's always happy. Whenever the doc is happy, something's wrong, remember? Whenever he's not drinking his brandy. Let's see where this leads us. I don't see a natural conclusion to the episode. So far, they're not. there's no evilness. There's no sense of... Right now, we snap Spock out of it. We get back to the ship and we leave these people in peace and love and happiness on their planet. We don't need to destroy any computers, because there are none. I guess we could destroy all the, the spore plants. But yeah, inst interesting to see a first... Not a first glimpse into what Spock's thinking. We, we had that before in The Naked Time, but... This is the first real glimpse, where he's openly professing love for this woman. And I don't believe it's a trick either. I believe it's just releasing his actual what he's actually feeling. You know, he's not just in a in a trance where he's saying things he doesn't believe. I, 
I do believe that it's all real. Sandalow. Captain, your arguments are very valid, but they do not apply to us. My orders are to remove all the colonists. By force? That's exactly what I intend to do, with or without your help. Without, I should think. They could just beam you, though. They could just beam you up. Would you like to use a butterfly net on him, No, Jim? I'll think I'll use a... Captain. Hey, Sulu. It all seems normal. Where's Spock? Where's Spock and Mr. DeSalle? We haven't seen them since we began our check. DeSalle said he was going to examine some native oh, plants. Oh, DeSalle. He was in... That's that's a name that suddenly clicked in. He was in another episode. Was he in the the Squire of Gothos? Was he the he was the guy who was trying to he he I was the one I was surprised didn't get killed because he was trying to kill Trelane, sneak up on him with a, a phaser. <laughs> that guy. Who was the other guy? The the other guy name nobody can pronounce. Jaeger. Jaeger and Jaeger. Rock. See the landing parties when you want to soon? Yes, sir. And that guy looks like Kellogg. Rock. Kellogg. He just kind of looks like him. That one looks like a dragon. The rest of Are we looking at clouds? I've never seen a dragon. I have. But I've never stopped to look at clouds before. Mm -hmm. This is like Spock Shirley. It's nice. Leave him alone. Leave him be. His life might be in danger, but... Spock! Yes, what, what did you want? What's up? Uh, Spock, I don't know what you think you're doing. We're evacuating all colonists to Starbase 27. Not... No, I don't think so. He's going to stay here. You don't think so what? <laughs> I don't think so, sir. Report to me immediately. Nope. Spock gone rogue, Kirk. Spock. He's gone rogue. Spock. Give him two weeks. Two weeks on the planet. That didn't sound at all like Spock. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't. Not... I thought you said you might like him if he mellowed a little. I didn't say that. <laughs> you said that. I, not exactly. <laughs> Make sure the landing party works in teams of two. I don't want anybody left alone down here. Yeah. And nobody go near any... They don't know about the plants yet. Do, do you hear laughter? Spock's hanging upside down from a tree. <laughs> What are you doing with those things, Desal? Want you to take a good close look at these, Doc. Oh, Desal, they got to him. Don't get. They're very interesting. Don't let them get near you. Spock. <laughs> you out of your mind? A little bit. There'll be no evacuation, Jim. But nope. perhaps we should go back and get you straightened out, Mr. Sulu. We need to spore you. Mr. Spock is under arrest, and he's in your custody until we get back to the Enterprise. Very well. Come with me. Oh no, 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 no! Don't get too close! Oh, oh Sulu. Mr. Sulu understands, don't you? Sulu's Sulu? already gone, yeah. Yes. I see that. He's one with the body. Kirk was just far enough I away. I these plants are. But you're all going back to the settlement with me, and those colonists are going aboard the ship. I knew Kirk would be the last one to get infected. I can see the captain is going to be difficult. <laughs> Sulu is so easily turned, isn't he? Hiya, Jimmy boy. Oh, the docks. Hey, I've taken care of everything. How many of those did you beam up? Oh, must be might not own a hundred by now. Oh, the whole crew. Energized. Is the whole ship taken over? Ahura, are you okay? Put me through to Admiral Comac at Starfleet. Oh no. Oh, I'm sorry, Captain. No, Ahura. I can't do that. I short circuited them. Except for ship to surface, we'll need that for a while. God damn it, Ahura. Why do you have to be so technically competent? It's really for the best, Captain. He's very brave, touching it. Okay. How do we think? How does Kirk, on his own, undo all of this? You think he need at least one person who's like like McCoy, who could work on an antidote to it all? Because Kurt doesn't have that sort of bi biology knowledge to, to do anything. What's he gonna do? You know, logic them all? Like he did, does with the computer? And the... The Archons episode? Whew. What are all these people in a line for? Maybe they're in a line for getting bored. Maybe, maybe... Maybe we can still save these people. 
Maybe it's only the the high ranking officers that have been taken over. Get back to your stations. Yeah, get back. We're all transporting down to join the car. I said get back to your station. Ah, oh, for the transport room. This is mutiny, mister. Yes, sir. And you were a pretty regular yes. guy. Pod plants have spread spores throughout the ship, carried by the ventilation system. Well, why aren't you affected? I don't know why I have not been infected. Yeah. Is it some sort of... I'm not interested in anything. Is it some sort of thing that Kirk has, like an illness or something, that is something that's incompatible with the... My my guess. Incompatible with the, the spores, and they try to get him, but then it was like, oh, no, we can't go in there. Kirk doesn't have a... A brain. <laughs> he does. His, his ego is too strong for us. Is something like that? Like, oh, when I was younger, I had the... Like the guy with the appendix? He just got an appendix back, but maybe there's something physiologically different with Kirk. And we can use this physiological difference to, to undo something? Maybe in a, an offhand line of dialogue earlier in the episode, they might have said something like that? When we are talking about that guy's appendix? Kirk was like, yeah, but, but I had something similar with a... I've got a third nipple. Bones, you've seen it. You know, so, something like that? We all perfectly healthy down here. Anything at all to give us a lead on what these things are, how to counteract them. He needs help. Who wants to counteract paradise, Jim boy? Oh, Kirk's the devil. Bones. Kirk's the snake in Eden. Where's McCoy? He went off to create something called a mint julep. Yeah, he loves his drink. It's a paradise. The spores have made it that. You see, they actually thrive on Berthold rays. Right. In return, they give you complete health and peace of mind. It's a true Eden, Jim. It kind of sounds nice. No wants, no need. It kind of sounds nice, Kirk. We weren't meant for that, none of us. <laughs> yes. yeah. We have what we need. Except a challenge. I'm going back to the ship. He needs a problem to conquer. That's his paradise. An empty ship, though. Well, there's no, no other choice, Kirk. Order 24. General Order 24. Wipe him out. Engineering. Scotty? Not even Scotty's. Scotty's not in this episode, Kirk. Security. Anybody? Anybody even hiding? <sighs> Jettison all the pods, Kirk. Captain's log, oh. start date 34 That bottom button is his log. I am marooned here. <sighs> I don't know how to get my crew back. I don't know what I can offer against Paradise. Paradise. Time to beam down some apples, I think. Oh, it's coming! It's trying again. Enterprise to Mr. Spark. I've joined you. Layla and I'll meet you at the beam down point. Kirk out. I always, I always think Kirk is a plan, even if a pod gets him. Because he was faking it in the Archons episode, remember? What's that, a secret stash? Oh, a medal. Medal of Valor. Nope! Oh, he's back! He's back. That didn't last long. He's beaming down the nuke in a suitcase. But if he beams down, there's gonna be oh. nobody on the ship to beam anybody anymore. No! I... He's resisting. Can... Leave! <laughs> Sheer force of will. Violent emotions needs... Anger. No okay. Anger defeats paradise. Let's do it. Mr. Spock is much stronger than the ordinary human being. You? Yeah. Aroused, his great physical strength could kill. Oh. Are we gonna make... But it's a risk I'll have to take. We're gonna make Spock angry? What's keeping you, Jim? We've been waiting. And I realize there's some equipment here that we should have down at the settlement. Yeah? I think you and I can handle it. Why don't you beam up now? Oh. It won't take long. How's he gonna make Spock angry? Call him a half... What, was, what did he call him in that other episode? 
Ready to beam up, Jim. Half half breed or something. <laughs> oh, he's got a bat. All right, you mutinous, disloyal, computerized half breed. Half breed. We'll see about you deserting my ship. <laughs> ship. It's not getting. Don't understand. Of course you don't understand. You don't have the brains to understand. His father was a computer, and his mother an encyclopedia. My mother was a teacher. Yeah, don't don't insult his mother. The Vulcan never lived who had an ounce of integrity. Oh. Captain. And you've got the gall to make love to that girl. Oh, good, good, good. Bring her into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's enough. Does she know what she's getting, Spock? <laughs> oh, he... Shit, he's got a freaking chair. Snap out of it, Spock. Had enough? I didn't realize what it took to get under that thick hide of yours. Yeah, a lot. It isn't every first officer who gets to belt us, Captain. <laughs> How do you feel? You don't belong anymore. Mm -hmm. Violent emotions. Overwhelm them. Destroy them. Striking a fellow officer is a court-martial offense. Don't, don't worry about it. Well, if we're both in the brig, who's going to build the subsonic transmitter? <laughs> <laughs> it's a little funny, funny episode at times, this one. Oh. Well, now, it's a little early to be counting stars, Miss Layla. I wish you'd come back. Well, now, I think I can fix that for you. Enterprise? He's laying on the accent take, isn't he? Enterprise, Spock here. Mm. Play along, Spock. Don't let her... Don't let her know. Can I come aboard? I've never seen a starship before. It'll take a few moments. Just wait there. Out. He sounds so sad. She'll know instantly that he's not the same. Yeah. You're no longer with us, are you? It was necessary. Oh, come back with me, please. I can't. On earth, you couldn't give anything of yourself. Give her something, Spock. Couldn't even put your arms around me. But well, we're happy here. I, I can't lose you now, Mr. Spock. I can't. I have a responsibility. I am what I am, Layla. And if there are self-made purgatories, then we all have to live in them. Jesus. Mine can be no worse than someone else's. I've lost all of it. The spores. Oh, her emotions. I've lost them too. Do you mind if I say I still love you? You never told me if you had another name, Mr. Spock. You couldn't pronounce it. <laughs> yep. Now it should begin to work on their nerves in a few minutes. Oh, it's gonna make them all pretty uncomfortable. It's making me uncomfortable. Sorry, Giselle. What do you think you're what doing? What are you doing, Sulu? Oh, they've got weapons. Careful. Don't kill each other, fellas. It's festival! Festival! How's that drink? Bones? Tasty? I've been thinking about what sort of a worker I could assign you to. What do you mean? What do you mean, work? We don't need you, not as a doctor. Yeah, I oughta. You could be a bartender. <laughs> Snap, he snapped out of it. What about the, the leader, Sandoval? No, oh, no, whoa, whoa. Sorry, Sandoval. Don't you like your drink? I don't know what made me do that. We've done nothing here. No accomplishment, no progress. Hey, you were happy, though. Three years wasted. I don't know, what kind of progress were you expecting on the planet? We wanted to make this planet a garden. It is a garden. You can't stay here. It'd be cool shore leave planet, though, right? They're all beginning to call in, Captain. Yeah. Rather contritely, I should say. We'll give you every cooperation. Cool. Everybody's back. The horror is fixing up the communications. Well, that's the second time man's been thrown out of paradise. No, no. It's this time we walked out on our own. <laughs> maybe we weren't meant for paradise. Hey, maybe. We could talk about that. Struggle. Claw our way up. Scratch for every inch of the way. We haven't heard much from you about Omicron Seti 3, Mr. Spock. I have little to say about it, Captain. Except that for the first time in my life, I was happy. Mm -hmm. You took that from him, Kirk. You took it from him. Kellowitz. It was Kellowitz. It was Kellowitz. Kellowitz survived the episode. Once again, 
He should have he should have resisted those spores though, shouldn't he? I'm not surprised about Sulu. Maybe maybe Kellowitz has just gone along with it. You know? Tactically, strategically, he was going undercover. He was Kirk's man on the ground just in case he needed somebody. Oh, and was Frank Overton's final performance before his death? Holy moly. He was what? Am I reading this right? He was 49 when he died. Holy shit. Heart attack. Yeah, he filmed it just one month before his death. Wow. I guess you can never... You never know when something like that's going to get you. That's, that's scary, though. This is an episode about Spock. Primarily about Spock. And to showcase that... Well, showcase, one, he's acting. That he can act kind of like a normal human you know we break from his logic and we get to see him in a more relaxed and there's a lot of comedy that plays off that as well especially when he's hanging from the tree uh, but before we get to that i want to talk about kirk kirk why kirk could resist the spores for so long what is it about kirk i was speculating that he had some sort of medical issue in his past that maybe the spores couldn't lock onto because there was something something in particular he was missing something in particular he, he had done some procedure he had that um, made him incompatible with the spores but when we learned later that strong emotions and strong specifically negative ones can override the influence of the spores Maybe there was there's something about the pressures of being in command. Kirk is at the top of the chain. He's responsible for everybody. Uh, every one of his crew and the mission. And he's always, always on. And he always has that pressure and that kind of that defiant nature about him. And always hyper vigilant. And I think when the spores are trying to get him, it's that sort of emotion that he, he, he holds inside him that they bounce off. They can't quite get him because he's always got his guard. Up. And, or he's always angry. He's always angry at Sulu, <laughs> who just got turned instantly. He was, he was turned, as he was walking up to the pods, he was like, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, Suda's just so happy. He's just, he's always happy. And Kirk can't stand it. Um, but yeah, that's my pet theory for why Kirk couldn't be, couldn't be, um, why he was the exception. The only difference between him and everybody else is that he's at the top. And it's his... The, it's the overriding pressure of the situation and all the negative emotions the self-doubt the, that he suppresses that were actually keeping him from being infected and he let his guard down though he let his guard down that's why he was eventually effective he was lonely on the ship and he I, I like those those empty ship shots too with just Kirk in them and you could say that maybe he would be even less likely to be infected at that point. But maybe he was coming to terms with, what can I do? You know? I'm kind of marooned here. Maybe paradise isn't so bad, and then... Psh, the pod could sense, sense it's time to get him. You know? Kirk was considering it. Maybe. For that moment. Didn't last long, though. I love the scene at the transporter room. It's kind of a comical scene. Where he's like, no! No! Snapping, snapping himself out of it. And then beaming Spock up. That was just great. The, the insults he was flinging at Spock were just masterfully crafted. Everything he could think of. About his mother, his father, his, his robotic nature. And then bring in Jill, Layla's, Layla into it? Does she know what she's getting into? Really trying to get every little 
every little needling point he could get with Spock. And he finally broke. And he let Kirk have it. Look at the stool. He was almost going to crush him. Only a commercial break saved him. Gave t Spock enough time to, to snap out of it. Um, and then we have the the scenes afterwards where she she's also snapped out of it when she beams up but she's still acting the same her personality doesn't change she still loves Spock but he can't he doesn't give her anything in those scenes I, I wanted him to I wanted him to to tell her a secret that he loves her but he can't show it I want I, I wanted that but we didn't get it from him but we had also had some poetry from him about purgatory a, a purgatory that he's fashioned for himself you know there's some there's some gems of dialogue in this speaking of gems of dialogue after back on the planet 20 minutes earlier when Kirk and McCoy are trying to get Spock on the communicator. And Spock's just like, yeah, whatever. Kirk turns to McCoy and said, I thought I thought you wanted him to mellow out a bit. <laughs> I love that little exchange. It's just so... Like, they're in a dangerous situation, but it's so funny. And let's talk about the, the main point of the episode, the main issue of the episode, the main thrust of the episode. This is a beautiful planet. There's no evil. There's no evil force behind any of this. The spores aren't evil. They're bringing people peace and harmony. Unlike Return of the Archons, where we need festival and we and it's it's more controlled. Everything is controlled, controlled peace, controlled harmony. On this planet, it's more of a oneness. It's more of a a natural. It comes from a natural source rather than a machine source. So everybody is themselves, but free from their burdens, free from their responsibilities, free from their ambitions. It, it is an Eden. It is what you might imagine if such a place existed. When you die, you would go there and you wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. You could just exist with people and harmony and you know so it's not there's no the only problem with it is the thing that Kirk mentions and that Sandoval mentions at the end that there's no challenge that there's nothing to strive for there's no progress there's no that the human spirit and the human nature is is uh, uh, needs challenge that it thrives with hardship and it, we need something we need achievements we need something to accomplish like the medals the medals when Kirk is looking at the medals he's like this is something I I earned there's a sort of virtue and value in going through something to earn something and to put in the hard work there's an eth ethical nature to the, the argument and that to be blissfully happy in this Eden and do nothing is a bad thing it has no, no meaning and no value and no purpose but as I was saying, let's let's think of it as a, we can argue about whether any of that is true, by the way. And uh, the the meaning, the purpose we get from our own lives and how we we frame work and hardship and the rewards that come from that. We can talk about that. That's a big issue. But as I was saying, maybe as a compromise have it as a shore leave planet you're going to go down there you're going to feel great it's going to be like a drug you won't want to come back up or we're going to have to snap you out of it and that's what you agree to when you go down to the planet you're going to spend two weeks there you're going to have a great time we're going to snap you out of it you're going to feel a bit unpleasant for a bit and then you're going to go back to work 
But um, I think it would be healthy. Certainly something for Spock to consider. He couldn't get anything on shore leave. That shore leave planet was not for him. But this planet, perhaps it is for him. In a parallel to the Archons episode, maybe it's like a festival for Spock. A, a means of expressing something that he's suppressing. Maybe a healthy way of doing that. As long as it's not akin to a drug that you can't give up, you know, that you're addicted to and would have negative impacts if people were exposed to it over and over. But I think it's a perfect candidate for a getaway. Um, especially because the spores don't alter your your core personality. They take away your worries. Kind of like you're relaxing at a spa. But they don't change your memories. They don't, change your, they don't make you robotic. They don't make you violent. They do make you a bit sneaky. You want to bring everybody else into the into the communal aspect of it. We might have to work on that, but I don't think it's such a bad planet and I don't think we should be quarantining it. We should think about the, the value of it. Maybe we could study it. And the doc, it's no surprise that the doc made himself a drink. But what is surprising is that he threw it away once he snapped out of it. That's not the doc I know. He would have snapped out of it and just finished the drink. <laughs> There's other ways to show that he snapped out of it. Ah, all well, those poor animals, though. The spores couldn't do anything for the animals. I love, I love the evasiveness at the beginning as well. When Kirk is asking, "What happened to all the? What about all the animals?" And the answer to that is, "We're vegetarian." <laughs> It's just so, it's it's not an answer. It's not an answer. And that's what Kirk says. It's not an answer. And the comedy moment with Sulu. Sitting right next to the the plants that we don't know yet. We don't know that they're the source. And I wouldn't have known other than the fact that the previous episode, at the end of it, we were seeing people getting hit by spores. Maybe I would have picked up on it, but, you know. Um... But yeah, Sula saying he wouldn't know what weird was if it was sitting two feet from him. That's great. And we had the cell back. Not only did we have Kellowitz, we had the cell. From the Gothos episode. And, you know what I appreciate? They have, they have their names. The actors are like, oh, you want me to be in this episode? This is the name I had in the previous episode, if you don't remember. We'll just use that. So yeah, I like it. I'd forgotten kind of what Kellowitz looked like. I knew that guy was vaguely, vaguely like him, but I wasn't sure. And I can't remember if they mentioned his name before it popped up at the end. But yeah, good to see him. Uh, no Scotty this episode. I think he's the only regular that wasn't in. Kirk tried to contact him, but he wasn't there. We did learn that the bottom button, we have yellow alert, yellow alert, red alert. I'm not quite sure which order they're in. Jettison pod. We needed a hundred of those buttons this episode. And we don't know what the fourth button does, but the fifth one is Captain's Log. As far as I am, I can, I'm aware. Maybe the fourth button is just trying to communicate with people. Hey, Scotty. Scotty. I liked uh, Layla in this episode. I liked how she acted with Spock. Even though we knew that she couldn't be trusted. And she was a bit creepy when we learned that she couldn't be trusted. She still had a gentle warmth about her. And it was clear that she loved Spock. From the moment they laid eyes on each other. Um, and I liked that Spock was given this episode Leonard Nimoy you know just to show a different side of him and there were some even though it was 
kind of like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. I believe Spock is in actually in one of those, those movies. Um, it never really felt uh, scary. The episode never felt scary, even when it was just Kirk alone on the ship. I was never really terrified of it. I think it's because everybody was gentle about it, about assimilating everybody into their commune. It wasn't, it wasn't a violent, it wasn't people holding you down and jamming spores at you. It wasn't people chasing after you. It was more of a, hey, come over here, check out this cool thing. You know? <sighs> you know what else it could be? Retirement planet. You know? At least, at least some, some part of it. I know once you retire, there's still things you want to do. You still want to have purpose and, and do things. So maybe we can go halfway with it. You can be released from your, your the shit in your brain, but also be able to create and produce value on your own terms. So I think a halfway would work really well as as an actual Eden. Eden. Yeah. It is funny. It is funny. The solution to the problem of paradise is uh, angry, violent thoughts. <laughs> Kirk is literally the devil in this episode. Speaking of the devil, the next episode is called The Devil in the Dark. So, be careful. Be careful around shadows in the next episode. And, uh, shields up instantly. We also, we, the, the episode started with tense music. Set, setting the scene for the planet, even though we didn't know anything was wrong yet. There was a certain trepidation about approaching it. Even though apparently we thought everybody was dead, long dead, and we were just going there to, I don't know, get the bodies. I'm not sure why we were going there, but to make sure that we're dead? You have your orders, Kirk. Right. Thank you for joining me. This is one of those episodes where I feel like the more, the longer it went on, the more my brain started clicking on <laughs> I'll see you next week for Devil in the Dark have a great day don't worry too much about things you know let some spores into your life just a little bit a tiny bit